What's up guys, Tyler Casey here, and today I have a special guest, Ariel. He is the VFX guy from the My Money music video with Combat with a K. He also goes by Bosworld, that's his channel. So he's gonna break down the video, all the VFX. If you guys haven't seen the video, make sure to go check it out on the channel. I'm gonna link it below, and I'm also gonna link his channel below. So if you guys found this helpful at all, make sure to go check out his channel. Thanks. What's up guys, um, my name's Ariel Porta, otherwise known as Boss World. And I'm here to do a little VFX breakdown of um, Tyler Casey's video that he did with Combat K for his song, uh, Got Money. I'm going to start off with uh, the intro that I did. Um, you just see, I'll just play it first so you get an idea of what, what's going on. So the first thing um, that I did was uh, put uh, Tyler Casey, directed by, um, on the ground there. And I I was going to track it onto the ground, but I thought it would just be easier to go on the clip and create a 3D camera tracker. And so, like, let's say I grab these points here. I create a null. That null tells me, uh, it will tell me, like, what it can tell me what position it's in in that 3d space and if i put if i create a text or is a tyler kc text right there uh if i hit f4 it'll toggle these switches um it it's in 3d space right now oops so it's in 3d space right now at that position because I copied, I basically put it in the same Z space, X and Y as that null right there. And I also added motion blur to the text. So as it's kind of, the camera is like swinging quickly around, it creates like a blur. Um, and then we got the license plate there also that I changed. I found a license plate generator on Google and I put it over his license plate and then I found a license plate border uh, for license plate frame and I put it on top of that too and I did my best to match the color and as you can see it kind of like there's a gradient uh there's a gradient ramp over um over the license plate and I animated the ramp so that half of it's kind of black and then white and then as it gets closer all of it gets white and kind of grayish then the my money text that was done um with Element 3D, which is a plugin from videocopilot.com or videocopilot.net, I'm sorry. And yeah, you just um, basically you create a text, and under Element, you can set a custom layer to that text, and then um, you you extrude it uh, with this tw with this option here, and you know. From there, you can fuck with some of the options and make it how you want. And then I added Ecto, which is a great plugin from Red Giant Universe. And yeah, so it kind of looks like that. It gives it that Chinese look, that, you know, Japanese look. Oh, and by the way, uh, Element works uh, with the 3D camera that I that I created. Um, so that's, that's pretty awesome. Like, it just... And then... Um, Basically what I did, I took one of, the, one of the points here, created a null, grabbed the position from that null and copied it over to the, uh, copied it over to the um, Z, the position Z for the, for the element layer. And then for that, uh, for this part, um, what I did was I went to the point right before um, he's going to start, he starts covering it. So right there he should be covering it. And that's where I started to roto him out. So I duplicated the original clip and like so, and then I started to, and I hit, this is the roto tool. I'll be doing a tutorial on this later. So watch out for that. And uh, yeah, you just kind of outline him. It's a pretty great tool in After Effects. You can just start outlining people and it kind of does its best to, um, basically if I move one frame forward, it does its best to like match or to continue covering up the, 
the selection. It doesn't. It doesn't always work. It depends on the lighting and and um, how much movement there is. But for the most part, pretty freaking good. Um, and so I rotoed him out. And yeah, just put it on top of the element layer. Layer. So as you can see right here, combat K roto is above the element three D uh, element three D layer. And then as soon as he covers it all up, I just that's the element three D layer is is uh, is cut. So yeah, that's how I did that part. And then uh, we can go over to the scene one. All right, so um, right now I'm gonna be going over uh, the first scene, which basically going over this is gonna explain all the other gunshots. I basically just did the same thing, but over and over again. Um, I'll pl just play it a couple times so you get an idea what I did. So there's a muzzle flash. Uh, I put some light behind it, or it's not behind it. I just put it over with over, over the whole uh, clip because I'm lazy. Um, and then there's a bullet shell coming out. Um, there's the hammer, the gun hammer uh, being animated up as the gunshot goes off. And then there's a blowback. And there's also um, some light hitting his face uh, from the gunshot. And what made this shot a lot better also is that Tyler Casey, uh, when the trigger was pulled, um, a light was flashed from, I think, right here uh, outside of the frame. So that really gave the whole scene some life. Uh, you can see the back illuminated right here. Um, so yeah, uh, we'll get started with the muzzle flash because it's the easiest part. I just found uh, some stock footage and I put it over it. So, um, and the stock footage, it's not just like one frame long. It's, you got the flash and then you got some smoke that comes out of it um, that floats to the right. And I was, what made the effect what made everything possible in the scene, in fact, is um, Mocha. Uh, what I did was I used Mocha uh, to track um, the uh, the wall here in the back. I'll just bring it up real quick. So, yeah, I tracked that. And basically what it does is... Um, it tracks a pl planar surfaces and uses that data and converts the data into position, scale, and rotation frames, keyframes. And you can export that data, you copy it, and then you create a new null, which is basically an empty layer that can carry that information. And you paste, you paste that information. So I just renamed it gun track null. And when I paste it, it uh it has all that information for the whole clip uh throughout the whole clip so the position scale and and rotation and you can parent any layer to that so i'm going to show an example of what uh what a track null can do um basically uh let's create a new layer and we'll, i'm just going to make a mask around it and I'm going to create a new null. And I'm going to create my own my own tracking data. So this is what a null is. And I'm going to move it here, 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 and here. So you can see you can see uh what's going on there. It's an empty layer, by the way. It's just information, but it's telling you the box is a representation of how that information is is uh, is moving. And if I parent this solid to the null, it's going to mimic that information. So that's really useful for, for instance, like, you know, the smoke. If I hadn't paired it to the to that track null that I created from the wall, it would just be stuck there you know not really moving with the camera and it look less much less much more uh less re realistic um so yeah the reason why it's moving right is because of the track null the gun hammer is also linked to that track null so that it moves with the gun as if it's connected to it because if i let's say i um i'm gonna turn off the gun hammer layer 
there's nothing there um, because I also added um, basically what I did was I took a duplicate of the background I freezed it so it's just an image um, and then I basically let's say I I masked like the wall and I added it on top of the original hammer so this is like the original hammer and it's not even I'll show you it's not even moving as he shoots the gun so I wanted to I wanted it to move so I had to if I hadn't put the wall on top of it it would just look like this like there would be another one because I animated it so I needed it I couldn't have duplicate of that so yeah I added the wall on top of it and so it looks more realistic when I when I cropped the hammer and I animated its position um, and on the hammer I also added some motion blur and the blowback uh, for the blowback of the gun that's just a duplicate of the so I made a copy of the footage and I masked the top and then I just animated it so I think the layer is right here you can see it like moving and it's only a it's only like only four frames long so I didn't even I didn't even track that on there so I just uh, animated it by hand and added motion blur to it and then we got the light I just created a new solid and when you want to emulate some light you want to pick like a light orangish yellow kind of like that you name it light or something and then um, you mask it and you change its blend mode to add and you feather it out heavily so yeah it looks like light when you so yeah that's what I did for um, this background here but instead of add I use color dodge uh, color classic color dodge and for the face I used um, I used add and feathered it to 900 pixels so yeah and the shell that was just a, a stock footage that I found of a shell spinning around um, and I animated it moving out of the out of the chamber and out to the screen so just the position and the scale so that's how I do the gunshots so yeah I'm gonna play the clip here so you can see what I did Look, some sparks some light reflection on him and the bullet goes behind him so for combat um, slicing the bullets um, what I did was um, I first animated a 3d bullet using element 3d and I'll show you what that looks like so element 3d is pretty cool um, you can bring in an obj 3d like a 3d model um, you can add different uh, materials to it. I bought uh, pro shaders like gold, metal. Uh, I just put gold because it looks dope as fuck. And um, you can animate it in Z space. So um, it's pretty slow, but yeah, you can move it like forwards, backwards. And so I animated it. And as soon as I thought the bullet would hit the sword. I added uh, some stock footage of sparks coming out. Um, I think it was like a firecracker stock footage. And hits, boom. And the bullet cuts in half. So this one, for this slice, I only had one, one piece fly off. Um, I wanted to mix it up, so one piece. And that's just another, another element 3D bullet that I did. So I got the first bullet here and then the... Uh, where's the second one bullet one cut yeah so that one's right there and I added a little glow to it with ecto and animated the intensity so you know first it gets the bullet gets hit and there's a lot of heat transfer and then it starts to starts to cool off as it flies and I animate I animated that in front of uh, to go in front of uh, to go behind uh, combat and I did that by using a by duplicating the original clip, rotowing out combat, and then placing it on top of the 3D layer. And then, so you can see the roto right here if I, yeah. It doesn't have to be a perfect, as long as you're 
rotoing out the parts, the edges where the bullet's gonna pass through, you should be fine. So, yeah. And then the second bullet there, same thing. Animated a bullet coming out of, out of screen. And then spark, and then this one has two bullets flying off. Basically just two different layers. Each one has element 3D on it, and I put two different bullets flying off. It's not even, you know, it's not like I cut them in half. It's just, I'm, it's happening so fast, and there's so much motion blur that it just looks like it's being cut in half. And same thing, I added Ecto. And um, when he does hit, I when, he, when the bullet does get hit by the sword, I did add a little reflection on him. Um, you can see right there. Um, where, and you just kind of mask out um, a solid, you know, change it to add, feather it out, and you mask out where you... Well, actually, I like to mask out first, and then you feather it out. But, yeah, you just mask out where you think um, the light's going to be reflecting on him. And then for the last one, same thing, Ecto, um, Spark, two, two layers with two bullets, and they're right here. See, I have the left bullet, right bullet, you label it so you don't get yourself confused. I had some directional blur because I didn't think there was enough motion blur. Um, some Lumetri color stuff. And another roto, you'll see right here. It goes behind his hair bun. Shout out to the bun. Um, and it goes behind him. And you can see the roto right here. Pretty cool stuff. So yeah, that's how I did the bullets. Play that one more time. And I'm gonna show you the uh, the outro as well. All right, so I'll show you um, how I did the outro. Basically just, you know, I animated a, I'll show play it first actually. I got the names there. Um, basically I just uh, found a samurai sword on online um added the texture to it um my money has you know ecto on it and just another font there added a what is that how did i even do that did i mask it oh yeah so i added a mask to the layers i masked them key i key, I keyframe the mask so they get cut off with the blade. So that's the Combat K mask. Uh, where's the... God, I'm terrible. Here's the mask for the title, for the I Money title. And then I, I did a shitty job, kind of, but still did the trick of uh, Keyframing the position, rotation by adding a null because I couldn't track the blade for some reason, so I had to manually track the uh, the text, which took me like an hour to like to fix. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. I hope this uh, this video helped.